Hi, Tom. How you doing? Good, buddy. How are you? You well? I'm doing great. Excellent. Uh, so I thought you were fantastic in the film, as usual. And uh, obviously, you are doing a lot of things. So I wanted to ask you, what in particular uh, attracted you to this role? Uh, Jeff and Austin and Jody and Michael Shannon and the script and um, the the piece, uh, all of it was uh, very uh, attractive, <laughs> as you say. <laughs> That's what attracted me to it. So before this film, how much experience did you have with motorcycles? Uh, I can ride a motorcycle, um, not to any great level of proficiency, but I can get around on one comfortably. If somebody gave me a, a motorcycle and said, this is your transport now, I'd be happy with that. No, unless it was raining, and then, <laughs> and then I wouldn't be. Uh, so enough. Like uh, I, I, I've been riding for about seven years, uh, and so enough to know how to ride a bike. Gotcha. Uh, so I'm a filmmaker myself, and I feel Ooh. like there's no better person to ask than you know somebody with your experience what traits do you think make a great director? Oh. That's a really good question. Um, there are different types of director. Um, and all of them can be great. You have shooters who are technically great, don't you? You have writer directors and you have uh, auteur kind of writer directors. I think there's more to that, but uh, I think you need to know what it is that you want and what you want to say, ultimately, and be able to articulate that specifically to the the people you're going to work with across all departments, and also get your job done. You know, to the greatest level that you see yourself in it, but allow it to be what it will be without you having a, a defined understanding of what the answer is. Uh, once you go into the, there's three parts to making a film. There's the big, like the writing of it and creating development. Then there's the shooting and then the edit. And at each part of it, I suppose a great director needs to know where they're headed with it and what they want to do with it, but also leave the ability for it to become and develop what it also is and becomes whilst also keeping the direction on where you're headed with it so and have the capacity to know i think never leaving a stone unturned and best idea wins and having that whilst also meeting the time <laughs> to, to to take on board it, it, all the facets of filmmaking in order to present what it is that you have to say. Because as a director, I guess all the audience is going to look at everybody through how you chose them to look. You know, as if I'm on stage or you're on stage, I can choose where I'm looking on the stage at other actors. Whereas a director, you're going to choose how I as an audience member see this. So the greats mm, fall into different camps, but they have to take all of that on board. So why are we watching yours? What's so important about you? What are you good at? Because you probably are. So show me. It's really interesting. It's, Jeff is a writer director, obviously. So I'm sure he's very particular about every little thing he wants. Uh, mm -hmm. You were watching a Marlon Brando film. Your character right. was in the film. And so yeah. that made me want to ask, was there any films that Jeff had you watch kind of as homework for the film? No, I think he mentioned cas Casino. Uh, no, Goodfellas uh, or something like that. But no, he didn't. He, he didn't. He was very uh, gracious, actually. He sat and talked with me for, for a long time about what he was writing and why he was writing it and what was important to him. And what he, how he saw it and how it was important to him and talked about his, his brother and his family and, uh, and his, his passion for actors and his passion for storytelling and passion for directing and stories and films and why this was important to him. 
uh, and obviously he'd written it too, you know, so he had a wealth of information. Well, it looks like uh, I got to wrap up, uh, but before I go, I wanted to say uh, I've dabbled in some no gi jujitsu, and so seeing you train has made me want to maybe dabble in some gi jujitsu. So keep kicking ass. How long have you been doing no gi? Uh, on and off. Uh, I was in the military, so I kind of trained when I in? had the time. What was that? What were you? What What, what were you in? Uh, the Coast Guard. Look at the Coast Guard. Yeah. Okay. And how long did he do um, jiu-jitsu for, off and on? Uh, before the pandemic, I, I trained for about a year and a half. Cool. Oh, and all, all no gi. Did you wrestle before then? Uh, no wrestling, but uh, I, I plan on picking it up again. So Dude, seeing you has inspired you? me. Uh, I'm 28. Dude, you, might, you should, man. You should. And do the gi as well. If you like gi, it's, it, it's, uh, it's slower than, than no gi. You know, but it's it's equally as fascinating. If you like jiu-jitsu, then you, you should do both. Even if it's easier to get in your shorts and a rash guard and just, you know, like, it, it's, it's well worth it. If you like it, you know it's for you. Do it. It's brilliant. I definitely will. Good to hear. Thank you, Tom. It's a pleasure meeting Stephen. you. You too.